Hi, I'm Craig Tomlin from Startup Stories. I'm here at Reload Bar and Games uh, with its founders, Jim and Ravi. So, Jimmy and Ravi, tell me about um, Reload, um, what it is and, and how you set it up. Yeah, well, Reload, well, Reload Bar and Games is a full name, yep. uh, and we are a bar with games. So that means um, we're fairly heavy on the video gaming side. Yep. Um, we've got wall-to-wall -wall, uh, consoles and PCs, Nintendos. Everything's represented. Yeah, yeah, everything. Uh, and all um, generations too. So we, we've got some retro, some classic retro stuff. We do retro seasons. Uh, we, do, we also do board games. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got card games, board games. So. So games in general, with a with a heavy slant to video games. Why did you found Reload Bar and Games? Um, we decided to found Reload Bar and Games because uh, it was you know the result of us meeting uh, at the Barracks Internet Cafe, and uh, you know we already knew that gaming was becoming such a popular thing, it was hitting the mainstream culture, and that you know people like to have a few drinks while gaming. So we discussed the idea of. Could this work as a dedicated venue for, for people coming together, social gaming, esports, spectating? And we decided that, yeah, it could. So we started working towards making it reality. Yeah, we saw a number of things happening too. We saw um, uh, in Europe uh, a number of like pub stops and, and dedicated uh, venues um, setting up yeah. um, like this. Um, and also we saw, you know, the, the, the phenomenal growth of Twitch TV, mm -hmm. um, the, you know, the ridiculous amount of interest there is now in, in the big eSport tournaments, the Dota International with its ridiculous amount of prize money, the, the huge amount of viewers that are interested in League of Legends, uh, continued uh, following for Counter-Strike, um, and those communities were strong in Canberra, and there's strong communities in Canberra, so we thought so there's worth, opportunity worth a try. Yeah, well, getting on the crest of the wave. Yeah. Well, there wasn't anything else here, no. was it? No. So you're the well, first. Well, look, the closest thing was Jim's original business, which is the Barracks Internet Cafe, yeah. right, mm. that hosted tournaments. Um, but it didn't have that kind of, uh, that it certainly didn't have a bar, didn't have a, a place for people to come when they weren't playing. It was just, just it's just a gaming place. Just yeah. a gaming place. So this is more of a social hub yeah. than a gaming place. Okay, so what were the challenges you had to overcome, you know, after you came up with the idea? Uh, well, obviously there's always yep. ra raising money. Yep. <laughs> raising right. money. Yeah. Uh, fortunately, we, we found a way to do it without having to raise a whole lot, but, you know, um, uh, we were fortunate to be able to, to take a premises that had been vacated and was set up as a bar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we, we saved a lot on not having to build a bar. Yeah. Um, that was that was that. To be frank, that didn't happen. This wouldn't have flown. Yeah, um, right. uh, we had a few other challenges. Yeah, figuring out exactly what sort of content, you know, what sort of games we were going to go for. Uh, in the end, you know, we did, we decided that it was very important that it be social. So we've chosen games that are all local multiplayer. We don't just want to have people here playing World of Warcraft by themselves. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, and look, we're not hospitality guys, um, mm. so mm. one of the challenges was, well, we, we, we've, we quickly locked in a few good hospitality people yeah. to work with us, yeah. so that was an important step, but we ourselves had to come up to speed yep. yeah. pretty quickly in terms of how to run a bar, how to work in a bar, how to serve a drink properly, yeah. uh, and it's not something that you learn in a week, it takes uh, a bit longer. Takes a while. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So, so how long have you been open now? Uh, we Go going into our second year now. We yeah. opened in December of 2014. Yeah, so and, and it's been running pretty well, hasn't it? Yeah, 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 it has been, uh, generally speaking, well. Yeah. One or two weeks, a little bit late, you know, slower than we expected. Other weeks, fantastic. So, on balance, it's going well. Okay, yeah. so, so what have you learnt in that time that, you know, you didn't know coming in? Uh, well, we've learnt a lot of things. We've learnt that content is super important. Um, we need to run a lot of, we run a lot of events, you know, to make sure that we're, that, <laughs> That we've got people more reasons for people to come in. Yeah, uh, we've also learned how important it is to connect with all the local communities. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, we've we realised though that um, our because of our the way our revenue comes, we're a bar. Yeah, you know, so we yes. have to be a successful bar. Yeah, yes. you know, it doesn't matter what kind of games are on offer or 
or how good, how strong we are on the gaming side, if the bar doesn't work, it's not a business. Because yeah. that's what the business is, it's a bar. The place yeah. can be filled with people playing video games, but if they're not buying drinks... Yeah, <laughs> yeah you're not yeah. making any money. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Uh, and also, you know, it's up to us to make sure that the, the bar offering is a good offering. Mm -hmm. You know, that we, that we, we supply drinks, we, our service is good, their drinks are priced correctly, that we're offering something that people want. Mm -hmm. um, so just operating a, a, a good bar generically is important on top of well, our strong point of difference, which is the games. Yeah. yeah. So, so do you get many people coming in here who are here for the bar, not for the games? Yeah, quite a few. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think what, it, what, um, what it's done is it's created a, a kind of an alternative bar venue. So people, you know, and on a really crowded Saturday night, um, we've got a lot of seats for games, but we, if it's really, really crowded, we don't, not everybody can be playing a game at the same time. Yeah. And actually that's fine. A lot of people, they want to come in for the atmosphere, they want to come in to socialize. They'll occasionally have a go at a game when a seat comes up, and that's fine. Um, but it's that social hub which, um, which draws people in, whether mm. they're, you know, like hardcore gamers or whether they're just casual. There's yeah. so many casual gamers out there. That's right. Yeah. And also even just broader than the gamers, there's people that are into all the pop culture stuff, people that are into anima, anime, cosplay, comics, superheroes, all these sort of yeah. things. And you've got the board gamers coming in here yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So it is, it is actually a really broad mix, but it's all of that pop culture stuff that traditional venues still kind of exclude. Mm. Yeah. Right. yeah, yeah. Traditional venues... But they, they, I mean, it's not necessarily a, something they've sought after, but a lot of them tend to end up with uh, the kind of butchy kind of guys on the pool and the girls uh, dressed up to be seen. We're a little bit different to that. Um, mm. You know, where people, I think people can come in here and feel totally relaxed and they're, they're sort of avoiding that whole kind of meat market kind of thing. Mm. Yeah, so, so it's, it, it's really interesting because you've identified a niche in the market that was definitely there and you've done a really good job of filling it. Mm. Um, do you have much concern about competition ar around the place? No, look, I think we've planted this flag pretty well. Um, you know, we've, I think we're really nailing it here. Um, mm -hmm. You know, anyone else who came and tried to do the same thing nearby would have... Yeah, you know what, we... Right now, we are the biggest uh, dedicated eSport and video gaming venue in the country. Yes. And coupled with the, the Barracks Internet Cafe, we've got two uh, competition rooms for, for serious eSport. We've got a setup where the two venues are linked. We can get shoutcasters for tournaments, fill the place for our local league tournaments, push out to Switch TV. No one else is doing that. And I think to actually do that is a hell of a lot of work. Yeah. And, it t and, and look, and Jim, with that years of like decade of history doing that was yeah. was was the only guy who's really going to take that on mm -hmm. in this town at least. You know? Yeah, yeah. Well, it, it is a really interesting niche because it's an emerging one and it's a growing market. And uh, I, I think most people don't realise how big gaming actually is. That's mm. bigger than movies. Mm. Esports are attracting much larger audiences than a lot of sporting events. Mm. And recently, I even saw an article where basically I was saying. Uh, professional gamers are basically, uh, when they actually are competing, they're burning as much energy and fuel as our professional athletes. Yeah. So th there's yeah. not much difference, yeah. you know, but yeah. in that way. And I, I suppose one of your next projects is actually setting up a proper esports league in right. Canberra. Ab absolutely. Well, Relay Esports, we're doing we're doing a number of things with that. Where um, Firstly, we've got uh, we've already got a number of teams competing under the Red Eight Esports flag on a national level. Mm -hmm. So um, the League of Legends team was set up uh, about two months ago. Yep. Uh, they're now competing in the Open Ladder, which is the first stage en route to you know higher levels in, mm -hmm. in the local um, in the national leagues. Mm -hmm. uh, they're doing pretty well. They're winning almost all of their games, uh, which is great. Uh, we've got, and the, the players are scattered all over the place. I actually, I don't think any one of them are local. No. We've got a couple of guys in Sydney, a couple of guys in Melbourne, and there's two guys in New Zealand. Uh, so I guess they're international in that sense. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it's all under the reload flag. That's yeah, right, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. So they, they compete online. Uh, they do training midweek uh, quite intensively. Rigorous schedule. Um, we've got, we've got uh, a host of analysts. We've got a host of coaches, individual mm -hmm. coaches for in, all the positions. 
Yeah. Uh, we've got a very dedicated manager looking after that. Um, so, and we've also got now uh, a Rocket League team. Rocket League's just phenomenal. I mean, it came out like five months ago, and now it's like it's what, huge. It's number four, number five esports. Yeah. Anyway. It's just crazy. Uh, so these guys, most of them in Melbourne, uh, and they compete every week, and these guys are really good. Yeah. They're coming either first or second in almost every tournament they're in. Wow. So, I, I, you know, we're, we're thinking those guys are going to hit the top soon. Well, international. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's yeah. what we want. That's what we want. We've got Counter-Strike coming up, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, and then Dota 2, which is, which yep. is Jim's bag. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so, Relay Esports, that's the teams. Uh, the second thing is the tournaments. We're mm -hmm. already running tournaments here. We did, We've run a lot of tournaments. We're, we're, you've been running tournaments for ten years, right? right? Twelve <laughs> years, right? So, and we've in the last two years here, we've been running. We've been turning the volume up on that. Shoutcasters, yeah. Twitch streams, the whole thing, right? Yeah. Um, what our next step is national. Um, look, to be frank, they're already a little bit national. We get teams from Melbourne and Sydney coming, but we can have seriously uh, bigger national reach than that. Um, We're aiming to get 200 teams from across the country competing in an online leg of the next tournament for Counter-Strike. Fantastic. Which yeah. will then uh, play out to just eight teams being selected to play here in the finals. Yeah. And we'll have the finals here locally. We'll push that out to Twitch and the prize pool will be in the thousands. We got, yeah. Yeah, yeah we, we got thousands for, for that one. Uh, one small hurdle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, we, won't, we won't bang on about it because you get a start it'll take a go for it. Yeah, yeah. NBN, we still yeah. haven't got NBN. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. over okay. a year for our fibre. Uh, yeah, yeah our fibre really is critical for that sort of thing moving forward. Yeah, yeah. It, it's yeah. going to be make and break, I think, for a lot of businesses. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah. 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 Um, so that's exciting. The third part, we didn't even realise it. Um, we've got large organisations, you know, government, private, coming to us. Uh, wanting to wanting a way in to the world of esports, right? Yeah. They don't know how to get in. They don't know what it is, right? So they want to talk to somebody who does want some help with projects relating to esports. That's right. And we, we look this. We didn't even see it. But yeah. It just wow, it's in us, right? Mm. So in now we've started basically consulting on esport matters. That's right. Um, so that's exciting. That's, that's exciting. That's fantastic. Because yeah, because yeah, uh, again, that's like where the blogging scene was maybe five years ago, where all these large organizations want to start engaging bloggers, they have no idea how to do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, they just know it's a big thing, it's happening. That's, that's right. And the people who became sort of the brokers, who managed the bloggers, who interacted with the um, big brands, you know, are, are significant players now in the market, yeah. in sort of the advertising engagement style space. Yeah. And that's precisely where it sounds like you're headed, so, eSports. Yeah, I think, I mean, that's, that's it's interesting you know it's it's come out of a it's come out of an inter, internet cafe mm. into a bar into a managing teams and tournaments and then now this sort of consulting so yeah we, our our uh, variety of activities is growing with the world of esports yeah you know? esports is growing and what we're being what we want to do and what we're being asked to do is growing as well no that's fantastic so with the two of you how do you find working together <laughs> we work well together. Yeah. We're um, we're complementary in a lot of ways. We're different in a lot of ways. I think we fill fill in each other's weaknesses pretty well. We're yeah. we're pretty yeah. yin and yang in a lot of ways. Um, you know, I I come from, um, we both come from technical backgrounds. Mm -hmm. Um, but I'm sort of more into the games. You know, seen in a really heavy way, having run the internet cafe for a long time. Um, Ravi's background he's come from from uh, large. You know programming with big uh, financial firms and stuff. So he's got this really strong handle on the organization, the planning, all these things that are required, you know? So yeah, yeah, yeah. together we mesh really well. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, I was talking to uh, another, uh, I suppose, um, pair of, of, of founders yesterday and they said it's like a marriage. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> because you, you both kind of have different roles and different strengths and weaknesses and it's how you actually bring them together that, make, that makes it succeed or fail. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. It is like a marriage. Um, Ravi went to the on a holiday for the, for the weekend last week, and I realised I hadn't talked to him in about three days. And <laughs> I called him up and I said, "I'm not really sure what we have to discuss, but it just feels uh, weird." Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Fortunately, our, our wives' and girlfriends not not jealous. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> that's good. Yeah. Do they come in? Uh, well, no, mine not so much. She's got uh, we've got a few little ones at home, yeah. so it's got often tied up in there. Mine likes to come in a bit after after work and come and have a cocktail and yeah. things like that. Yeah. No, excellent. So, um, 
knowing what you know now, what would you have done differently when you set uh, up Reload? That's a good question. Yeah, you know. Can I say that we did it all wrong? Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm just struggling to think what would we have done differently. Well, I think we could have done a few things earlier yeah. that we realised worked. You know, yeah. we we uh, we could have started on the big tournaments earlier. Yeah, we took a little while to warm up. Not too right. slow though, but we no. we could have got on that earlier. Uh, yeah, we would have started. We, we were. We've taken a little while to work out things like how to market efficiently. Yeah. So we could have been pushing the marketing in that particular direction earlier. Spend mm-hmm. a few advertising dollars in maybe yeah. not the best places. Not sure, like the print, the print media is not so good. I mean, it's a waste of money. You know, it's not really worth it. I feel sorry for that business, but I don't know. I think they're struggling. Right? Yeah. Um, the digital marketing—that's the way, right? Yeah. You know, it's such an efficient, useful way. You've got to try it to, you know, to see, but. For Crystal Ball, we probably wouldn't try it. <laughs> you know, it, we've taken a long time to work out that how much the music makes a difference. Yeah, the party scene. Yeah. For the bar side of things, you yeah. know, on a Saturday night, you know, people want to, they want to party a bit. And mm-hmm. if we're just playing our own little personal favourite playlist, not good enough. Right? Yeah. We, we've, we've, got a, we've got a DJ that comes in who knows how to do that. Knows yeah. how, to, how to fire up a crowd and, you know, we, we took six months to work that out. And yeah. Uh, it makes such a difference. And to realize, yeah, just to realize what a big difference it can make. Yep. So, yeah. So, no, I don't think we did anything too wrong. We just sort of could have done stuff earlier. Mm. Okay. Uh, but it's a journey and we're learning, you know. Yeah. You know, it take, takes a little time to learn. You know. Yeah, well, where do you so. think you'll be in four or five years? Oh, that's a, <laughs> that's a proper interview question. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, you know, I, I actually genuinely hope that uh, we, we still want the bar to be open, you know. Uh, look, in sure. a perfect world, there'd be three, four of them. A number of them, yeah. Uh, and, um, and Reload Esports, we, we want we, we, we to be, we want to be rooting our teams on at the highest level. That's yeah, what that's we right. Do, right? We're managing high level teams and, you know, have a portfolio of clients that we're engaging in. Yeah, in, yeah, yeah. In, we want to, and, the, and, and the consulting stuff. Yeah. We want to be delivering, we want to be, you know, helping, helping the mainstream world understand and get involved in esports. That's you know? right. And that, and that, if that, that is a business for us, I'd be up. Yeah, yeah well, it's, it sounds like you're on the right you know, trajectory at the moment. So uh, all the best for the future. Yeah. Um, and so thank you very much, Jim and Ravi. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you.